Hello and good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carol Foster. I am the Worship and Membership Coordinator on Church Council here at Westminster United. Our minister is on holiday, so I volunteer to write the reflection for this Sunday. I have given it a title, Hospitality in the Time of COVID, an oxymoron to be sure. Before I begin my reflection, I want to say, I miss this church. I miss the hugs, the coffee in the foyer, the potlucks in the hall. I miss the laughter and the music and the singing. I miss our collective voices as we participate in the readings. I miss the kids and their innocent and candid observations during children's time. I miss the babies fussing and the toddlers tantrums. I miss the passing of the peace as we make our way around the pews to shake each other's hands. I miss our congratulations as we celebrate good news, birthdays, and anniversaries. I miss the prayers we share in times of need. Our motto here at Westminster is the church that serves, and we have in the past served up hospitality extremely well. We are a welcoming, generous, inclusive church to several diverse groups who borrow our space to, in order to meet. For many, this church is a safe place where we all can be accepted for ourselves. Ironic, is it not, that gathering together in a space previously thought to be safe is now potentially dangerous to our health. As a building, we are slowly opening up to a few of our user groups. As a church, we remain closed until it is safe. We are giving up our time together for the greater good, that of preventing a health crisis in our community. From news reports around our province, country, and world, we can see how easily the virus spreads when we are not vigilant. If there are strangers in need, our church would make exceptions. It would go against our Christian philosophy not to. But during this time of COVID, Travel is discouraged, and strangers are rare. Our first reading is the story of Rebecca and her act of courage and service. I'm going to assume that this didn't take place during the plague, or the story might have had a different ending. A stranger comes to Rebecca's village while she is drawing water from the well. The stranger asks for a drink, and she gives him one from her jar. Displaying no fear towards someone she has never met, Rebecca says, drink, and I will also give your camels some water. The stranger is a trusted servant of Abraham on a quest to find a suitable wife for Abraham's son, Isaac. Rebecca's act of welcome and generosity becomes the key to seeing her true character and is seen as a sign that she will marry Isaac. After suitable negotiations, she leaves her family and travels with Abraham's servant to Canaan, where she becomes Isaac's wife. To find out what happens next, you will have to read the Bible. I looked up the word hospitality in the dictionary, and it says, the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. To me, that means giving refreshment and sharing my space, two of the biggest no-nos in this time of COVID. Our little bubble, though, is slowly opening up to include an extended family, extended family, neighbors, friends. But our hospitality is limited to outside barbecues and driveway coffee clutches. When we, somewhat reluctantly, let someone into our safe zone, also known as the home, we ask personal questions. Personal questions like, how are you feeling? What's that call? Where have you been within the last two weeks? Who were you with? Did you wear a mask? Have you washed your hands? Have you washed your hands lately? Please wash your hands before you touch anything. And here are the distant factors. Hardly welcoming. Most of us take these questions in stride with a good dose of humor. And it is funny when you start to think about it, how the world is topsy-turvy and what used to be good is now bad and vice versa. 
I believe that the generosity of spirit comes when we are not judgmental, that we understand that we're not all in the same boat, and we accept that some people are afraid to open their doors, while others need to fling them open willy-nilly and take their chances because of lack of freedom is untenable and possibly dangerous. Most of us, in the meantime, continue to keep our distance. We stay home because now we're used to it. If we have to go out only for essentials, we shop quickly, alone, and with intention. We do not speak or laugh. We glance furtively around the empty aisle for where the yeast is. We suppress our chronic coughs with large doses of buckwheat. Which brings me to another irony. For several weeks, essentials meant only one thing, groceries. And because we had no social lives, we cooked and baked and ate our wonderful meals alone because we weren't allowed to share them with others outside our household. We're still not allowed to pop up. I wonder what phrase of opening that comes under. Sharing our resources is a wonderful way of showing hospitality. Communication experts claim that 65% of communication is nonverbal. We give clues intentionally or unintentionally about ourselves by actions, by giving a stranger a drink of water, our facial expressions, eye contact, our posture, our walk, our hand movements. The expression on our faces give the most clues, especially our smiles and the set of our lips. Now, Wearing a covering is seen as a sign of respect, then as suspicious and deviant. Perhaps one of the greatest ironies is an exposed hypocrisy. In October of 2017, a bill was passed in one of our Canadian provinces banning face coverings for people delivering or receiving a public service. Let that sink in. Space is a great example of nonverbal communication. The space around us is our personal space, reserved for those closest to us. I'll call it our cuddle space. When someone who is not part of our intimate group comes within the three feet, we instinctively back up. Invading that personal space can be seen as aggressive. The public space is that distance that public figures keep when they lecture or preach or lead. It is greater than six feet. Between three feet to six feet is our social space. That is the flight distance we use when we talk to neighbors, friends, and extended family members. Keeping further away was seen as being standoffish, even a little rude. But during this time of pandemic, it is this social space that has been eliminated. How quickly we have adapted. When someone comes within that three to six feet distance, most of us instinctively back away. I know I feel a little anxious when someone gets too close. Smiles are hidden behind masks. We hide in our houses. We shop furtively and with intention. We pour. We prepare wonderful meals that don't share. We stand several feet apart when we chat. So what can we do to show hospitality? I don't know. Perhaps we have to rethink what hospitality looks like. Perhaps our greatest act of kindness, at least for right now, is not to be hospitable. And if we are, to self-isolate or self-monitor afterward. That we accept our current world for what it is and not blame or criticize or judge but to pray that this time of heart is relatively short and soon we will be joining each other as a group of congregation. We bend, but we do not break. And in the meantime, we can develop a wait and see attitude as businesses around us slowly open. We see evidence of what happens in other countries that have taken more or less stringent actions. Let us have faith that someday soon we will be welcoming strangers within our midst and that someday we will also be strangers in other foreign countries and be shown hospitality. Hang in there, my friends. 
I miss you. May we talk love soon. Let us pray. God of love and kindness, we thank you for your model of courageous love. We pray that you will help us to make the stranger our friend each and every day of our lives, turning our lives outward in an ever-expanding sense of connection and love. Amen.